Well, it's 2016, and uh, this is our chance to drive the ProDrive built SPI Subaru. Um, something we really dreamed about in 2011 when we started this project. And uh, this car is very special. Uh, we've got uh, not massive amounts more horsepower, but the chassis is based around a World Rally car. Um, we're lighter than before, and uh, the gearbox is a sequential type paddle shift gearbox and we're probably running about 1200 kilos. So on this lap, we're just starting our warm up. Um, we've got probably about three miles to get the tires up to temperature, like we did in 2014, and me get my head ready to go uh, for the run. The conditions at the moment are very warm, probably a little bit too warm for optimum performance in the engine. And this is actually our second time lap around the circuit, which was done on the Monday of TT week. Every time you go out, you're actually changing the setup of the car and just developing because there's nowhere like the Isle of Man to test. And uh, you can test on an airfield or a racetrack as much as you want, but there's nothing actually like the TT course. So we're getting quite close now to the last few bends. I'm just uh, getting the feel again of the car. Um, as you can see, getting plenty of heat into the tyres. And. Uh, looking forward with anticipation for the start of the run. This part of the circuit is very slow now. Um, we've got one tight hairpin right. And once we go around that, we're basically on our flying starting lap. So here we go, we're now accelerating for the flying start and we're just about to go across the start line now. We're on our lap. Famous part for me is Bray Hill. Up to 170 miles an hour now, which is definitely faster than before. And again, building confidence through that. And that dip on the side does move the car around quite a bit. So we can't take that flat yet. First big braking point. All the way down to second gear. Bit of oversteer there. Tire's probably a little bit cool. And one feature we got for this car, which makes it a little bit more interesting, is we've got DRS, like a Formula One car. Now you'll actually see uh, when the red light comes on, that's when we're activating it. And the more confident I got with the car, the more I could actually use the DRS to give us more top speed and reduce the drag. Flat out now all the way to Union Mills. And this car was just a total pleasure to drive. You could carry a lot more corner speed. That's where we're getting our time. We're not actually going that much faster in terms of top speed but we're getting to that top speed a lot faster. Lovely section through there, little bump on the inside. And now it gets really fast all the way to Grieber. Uh, the only corner in the middle of that is Balagheri, or Balasgheri, as we all name it. So again, getting up to 170 quite quickly. Little lift here and then tip it in. And because the car is so much faster everywhere, I can actually build up every lap I get out. And I was hoping for another lap. And uh, there's a few places where we could have edged a little bit more time uh, just with confidence in the car. You've got two chances of a TT course. Um, if you take it flat and it's not, you're in a lot of trouble. So you've actually got to build up to see what the car or the bike will actually do on those corners. And that just comes with time and experience. Flat out now, we've got a little jump. And we've got to be careful because at 170 miles an hour, that car potentially could fly. Uh, so we've, uh, we're unsure what it's going to do over the jumps. So you've got to be a little bit wary when you're getting up to those speeds. Reba Castle down just one gear. Trying to get on the power, committed and nice and early. And the way this car changes direction is, is really, really great. 
the car sort of feels like part of me. Um, you think it round the corner rather than actually steering it round the corner. And as you can hear, you can get and commit on the power quite quickly. We're very fast now, all the way to our next point, which is Balacrane. So heavy braking all the way down into third on the power early. Tricky little corner there, you've got to get right in on the inside. And now we get on to what is quite a good section for the car because it's uh, there's quite a lot of corners, so we can gain a little bit of time um, with our corner speed through this lot all the way to Glen Helen. Late apex. And one thing I've struggled with a little bit in 2014 was the gap between gear 5 and gear 6. Uh, the ratios and the engine power seem to really help this car, so I'm gaining a lot of time just in that upper end of the gearbox. I'm changing gear with the paddle on the right hand side, um, pull it back to go up the gears and push it away to go down, and it's a 6 speed um, gearbox with a very fast change. Coming up to Sarah's Cottage, a very big climb, you can't really see it on the TV. Difficult corner that, and now you start building power all the way up the hill again to get onto the uh, next section. Helicopter always comes into sight here, you can see that above. What a scary corner at the end, just tips it in right. There's a pump on the inside for us there. Just coming down now, I've got to be a little bit careful. We've got a flag being waved for um, loss of adhesion. There's been a bike off and hit the barrier on the right. So they've had the oil flags out, as you can see the dust on the right and the bike's still parked there. Come up for the walls now, drop it down one gear, and I think we dropped it down two gears last time in 2014. And now flat out all the way to the top of the garrow. I really do like this section, and uh, especially in this car. Curb gets out, and then you've got the compression at the bottom of the garrow and you get a real good thump going through here. I think the camera even moved at that point. Tricky bend now, double apex right, flat left and then a double apex left. Now coming into Kurt Michael. Always great through here. And they're uh, using the yellow line. You can see the, well, the impression of speed you get with the proximity of the houses is uh, really impressive. So I'm moving around quite a bit there. Look how close people are on the left. Got to get the car straight just before it goes over the jump. And now really fast all the way down to the famous uh, jump at the left. Back up at 170 miles an hour, these corners are really nice. Just nick a bit of curb on the left hand side on the next one. As you can hear from this car, it does sound amazing and it's also revving quite a lot higher than the previous car, we're up to about 8,500 RPM, which is quite a lot for a turbo engine. And we can't jump it too high here because of the um, bodywork on the car. 
but you're losing time in the air anyway so as soon as she's back on the ground back on the car and flat out all the way to Balacroy. this next corner feels really good it's a flat out left hander car takes off and then we tip it into quarry bends which is a series of right left right Car pulling quite good to you there. Nice change of direction, and that's something this car does so much better than the production based car as well. Now, although we've got a little bit more power than before and a massively better chassis, you could still afford to have a little bit more top speed here, which would bring us a little bit closer to the bikes. They're topping out at just under 200 miles an hour, and as you can see, we're just getting uh, just over 170. Breaking down here at Sulby, it feels like you're doing two miles an hour, so you've got to be really careful to get the apex. Bit of oversteer on the outside of the corner. And now we get into the bumpy section from Ginger Hall all the way to Ramsey. Got bouncing around quite a bit. Bit of a kick on the bump there that was quite nasty and for the bikes they must have a hell of a hard time uh, hanging on all the way through here back up to 170 again chuck her into the left bang on the power early Coming up now is the Conquer Tree, which jits out a little bit on the left. And then we've got a nice series of a right, left and a right, and heading toward Ramsey. Car moving around a little bit there. Still good corner speed. This next corner is great, small jump, and then flat out straight into the next uh, right-hander. We've got the famous Ramsey bus stop, which we run a little bit wide into around this left. And then real hard braking all the way down into second gear for Ramsey Parliament Square. A little bit of oversteer, but not too much. Always feels great going sideways, but unfortunately it's not great for the lap time. Now the climb starts. Got the curb on the inside. And now into first gear, around the uh, Ramsey hairpin. Now the heat had just started to give us a little bit of understeer with the car. On our very first run, we had an oversteer balance. We changed it for this lap. Um, and probably went a little bit too much the other way. So there was a little bit more time to come from the balance. Really steep now going all the way up to the uh, gooseneck. Big bit of understeer there, pushed to the outside, and had to come out of the gas quite early. Now even climbing up the mountain, really happy with our speed. And uh, that was definitely an area we could gain on the previous attempts. You can see how much quicker this car accelerates from the 120 right the way through to 170. The last right hander before we have a bit of a break on the mountain mile. Always see the helicopter at this point, you can see it on there on the right. 
And the nature of the course, as you can see all the way around, is right and left, right and left. And then there's probably about five big right-handers that, that link it to make it a lap. So the tyres aren't really getting mega warm. There's no big loads, and it's always um, very, very high-speed corners. A lot of people comment that a bike is always um, not quite as fast as a car around a race circuit, but the Isle of Man is different to most race circuits because of the speed and the lack of tight corners. At the top of the mountain mile, big long left, right, left. And now we start dropping downhill a, a little bit towards um, our next sort of time point, which would be the bungalow. Big long right-hander. Had a little lift there. That's where Connor had his um, big accident a few years ago. You can see the windscreen is starting to get quite covered with flies. Um, wasn't too bad at this time of day, uh, but I didn't want to risk trying the wipers because it could actually make it worse, so you better just to get on with it and ignore it. I had a great board up there, somebody showing P1. We were the only car on the circuit, so I thought that was quite funny. Nasty left. Don't really like that corner. And now we're heading all the way down uh, for the last uh, sort of sector of the lap. Real nice feeling on these uh, three left-hand corners. One, two, bang. And we pretty well take it all as one. Windy corner, up a gear from last time. Fifth gear. And again, just picking a bit of understeer, we just run wide and just get the wheel on the grass there. It's no drama. Very difficult to get the car pulled across to the right hand side before the next left. Because you're travelling so fast, that's 170. And you definitely don't want to get that one wrong. Next is Kate's Cottage. Car moves around a bit there, and now flat out down to the Craigna Bar. Loads of people around watching. And you know it's going well when people are waving, which uh, definitely helps. Around the Craig. And now really fast down to Brandish, which is the big long left-hander. Again, back up at 170, 175 there. I should have put the wheel on the grass, but I'm not sure if it's the best way. He might be better keeping it all on the tarmac. It does move the car around. Hillbury, big bump on the inside. Car moves about a bit there. And now coming all the way around to signpost. Get a real good buzz on these uh, three lefts. You can see the car moving quite a lot and a load of steering input there. We can't mess up now. We've had quite a good lap. And um, I've got split time coming to me and I know it's looking pretty good. And in all fairness, my last sector was probably my worst, so there was a bit more time to come out of that. Really hard to see the turn in point. And got a real tight right-hander. Gives me a chance to give the handbrake a little pull. DRS wide open again. And uh, here we go for the line. And there we have it. Lap around in 2016 at an average speed of 128.7 miles an hour.